Hi folks, in this short video I'm just going to um, briefly discuss authentication tokens. So as part of the authenticating user, um, which is basically verifying someone's identity, you can use something that the person has to help prove their identity. And so an example of that are uh, authentication tokens where you have something like this for example, um, where you have this cycling code that shows on the screen and in order to log in you have to have this device. You log in with that code. The code is always different, it changes and you have to have the current code um, to, in order to log in uh, with that. You have something like this uh, for from my internet banking for example where in order to uh, log in you need to like type into this thing um, a, a passcode to even you enable this but then if you have the passcode it will give you a um, authentication like number like pin code that you basically is a one-time password that you log into to log in and then also if you want to transfer money you need to do something else on this device to authenticate that and so that means that you have to have access to this in order to uh, to do any of those things. Um, and so if you wanted to transfer money, it makes it harder, not impossible, but it's harder to do um, the, um, it's harder to do a fraudulent bank transfer based on like a, a man in the middle or a man in the browser attack. Not impossible, in fact, I did a demonstration a few years ago. And if you look on, there's a video on my YouTube channel around um, doing a man in the browser attack, but it involved basically social engineering the user to type some things into this thing. Um, and so this provides a you know an extra level of, of security there. But um, if you look at banks, at least in the UK, um, the way that banks do authentication is a, a pretty good example of how you... Um, to authentication right or to a very strong like high level um, they, do, they do like a decent amount of authentication the other kind of um, authentication devices uh, might be like uh, authentication token could be based on software on your um, computer so like on my phone I've got a bunch of like codes that um, cycle for specific websites and so you can use like this authenticator software and it will give you a, a code that only works at that time uh, to log into that service and it will keep changing so you know I've got one for uh, accessing um, my Microsoft accounts for work and like Google accounts and, um, and other things so so all these different devices provide that um, what you have level of authentication and it's really good it's really effective it um, it's a very good way of providing multi-factor authentication um, that is you know adds a lot of level of security um, to, to what's there they're relatively cheap especially like the, the mobile phone um, approach uh, the only disadvantage of having it on your phone is that if you're also logging in from your phone, it doesn't really become a separate factor of authentication because if someone manages to steal your phone, they've got both of those things. But, um, you know, it's still still an extra level of security that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So I've just got a couple of slides and I'll, I'll just say a few things. So one-time password, so a password that you only use the one time and is only available to use once, is essentially the ultimate in password aging, right? We're just continually changing what someone's password is. So if you need a password, a new password every time you authenticate, so that can be very secure. You obviously, you're not going to be able to memorize a list of 1,000 passwords. Um, so we use technology to help us to do that. So we use authentication tokens and um, the way that they give you the, the token, like the code that you put in, can be based on a number of different approaches. And just to give you an overview, you can have an algorithm that's based on the previous password, so it's like a chain of passwords. Um, you know, it wouldn't be a very good system, but you can literally just hash every previous, like hash the previous password would give you a chain. 
So and then you hash that, and you hash that, and you hash that. That gives you like a, a chain of passwords that you would, could use. Um, the 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 problem with um, with that approach, you know that 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 silly example I just gave you would be that you you know you if you knew one password you could generate the next one, but so you need some like hidden values there um, that are used as part of that. So you could have a challenge response um, where, where there's this an algorithm that's secretly shared and each new password is computed by applying the algorithm to the challenge. You can use time synchronization like the the example that I showed on my, my phone or the, this um, RSA device where the token, the part, the, um, the thing just changes based on the time. Uh, and then you just have to synchronize the time between the server and the, the device, or it has to be you know, close enough that they acknowledge that, that those tokens are still valid. Um, and you can have out of bounds share, shared secrets. So for example, just uh, you know, SMS, um, so a lot of um, things will basically just get you to, will send you the code on your phone, which you receive via SMS, and then type that in. Again, that's, um, that's good, unless you lose your phone, obviously. And if, you're, if the login's happening from the same device, um, then it provides a little bit less um, security, but it's still a lot better than only requiring a password, because now you have to steal the person's phone and know their password in order to, to um, get access. So some of the actual algorithms that are used um, are the, so OATH produce open standards, and that includes an HMAC-based one-time password, time-based one-time password, um, and the implementations include Google Authenticator and uh, free OTP. Um, there are websites that support that, so that includes like a lot, a lot do includes like Google, Facebook, Amazon Web Services, Dropbox, Kickstarter, GitHub, you know, a bunch of other ones. If you actually dig into any of the really big um, platforms and social media and stuff, a lot of them have these features so that you can use, um, you know, that app-based uh, method. And uh, you know, if you want to build into a Linux system, uh, all kinds of different authentication other than the standard like username and password, then you can use PAM to do that, and uh, which is pluggable authentication modules. And if you wanted to do the Google Authenticator thing, there's a PAM module for that. And we'll talk about PAM um, separately. So that's just a bit, a bit of an overview of what authentication tokens are uh, and how they work.